Greetings, my friends. Jimmer Linz here with your Source Filmmaker Tip of the Day. Today is Tip of the Day number 13. As always, thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, subscribing to my YouTube channel and generally being cool people. Um, a couple of uh, notes. I get a lot of requests for people to have me look at their videos or provide critique and so forth or to answer questions. Uh, I apologize. I simply don't have the time to respond to all of them. Uh, I tr really try and limit the number of ones I do respond to, not because I want to be rude, uh, but simply because if I respond to one person, then I feel like I have to respond to everybody. And pretty soon I'd be spending my whole day doing that. And I just simply don't have enough time between my job, my life, and all the other things that I need to do uh, to be able to accommodate all of that. So I hope you'll understand if I don't respond to you directly, it's not because I'm ignoring you. Uh, it is simply because I just do not have, there isn't enough of me to go around, unfortunately. But uh, I will continue to bring you these tips of the day because they are a lot of fun to do and I can uh, bank some time in the day to do that. So with that, let's move on to today's tip of the day, which is number 13. In today's tip, I want to show you a little bit about how you can use uh, the cameras in uh, Source Filmmaker to achieve some cool effects, specifically focal effects, focal distance, um, where you can, for example, have an object in the foreground be in very crisp focus while the objects in the background blur out. So you can call attention to it or you can bring your audience's eye to something by zooming in and focusing on something in the background while something in the foreground blurs out. It's a very old technique in uh, cinematography to focus attention, to provide uh, tension. You can do all kinds of stuff with it, and it is a really cool thing to be able to do. Uh, it's not, it, it, it is easy to do in Source Filmmaker, but it can have some impacts on things like how long it takes to render your movies. So proceed with caution. Uh, with that, let's go ahead and do this here. I'm going to say create an animation set for a, actually before I do that, I want to create a camera. So let's go ahead and create a new camera. And I'm going to position that camera right here. Why not? And then I'm going to create an animation set for a new model. It's going to be a spy first. We'll put the spy in the foreground. I'm not going to pose these guys or anything. I'm just going to set them down and uh, just leave them where they are so you can it's more about getting an idea of what the camera can do as opposed to posing things. So we'll go ahead and create an animation set for another new model. This time we'll have a scout. And we'll put him on the ground as well, he said. Oh, yes, of course. I have to select him before I can move him. That's right. All right, so he'll go on the ground. We're going to put him actually back here behind the spy. Now I'm going to put the camera right here so the spy's face is there on the right and the scout is in the background. So uh, when we look at this, you can see, especially if I switch back to timeline view, that both of these uh, entities, the, the spy and the scout, both have approximately the same kind of focal. Um, they're, they're both in the same focus, you know, the spy. And, and it's difficult to see the scout as much because he's smaller and in, on this screen it isn't totally clear, but you're not seeing any blur. So what do we want to do there? Let's go ahead and create an animation set for an existing element. And this time I'm just going to select a camera with the one that I've already spawned earlier. And uh, when I select it, I see that I get access to all of these little controls over here. Before some of these become really useful to us, though, uh, I am going to open up the element viewer here and I'm going to point out a, a couple of attributes over here in the element viewer. So I right click the camera and select, select show an element viewer. And then I look for this one here. It says depth of field quality and de and motion blur quality. Both of these are currently set to zero, which is the default. Um, you are in order to take the fullest advantage of the uh, depth of field stuff and the ability to change focal distance and so forth. You're going to want to turn this up a little bit. Be aware that when you do, you are going to slow down your renders quite a bit. I'm just going to set it to 16. If you go here into render settings, you can actually see 8, 16, 32. These are the settings you can use and you can actually override it for all, all of the cameras if you want, uh, or you can set it on a camera per camera basis. Um, again, setting it to any number above zero uh, tends to produce much longer render time, so be careful. Um, I, I've seen it take as long as an hour or more to render you know, um, one minute of video. Uh, <clears throat> Experiment, see what the best trade-off is for you. I tend to do a lot of my work without any uh, depth of field stuff or any of the special fancy stuff so I can render quickly and get a sense of what the thing looks like. 
when I do my final renders, I'll go ahead and just turn it on and let it run for as long as it needs to, which, you know, for a good long movie might be a day or more. So uh, it's kind of the what happens when you get into this kind of thing, when you get into longer videos. Um, so anyway, let's move back on to this. Uh, if we go back over here to the camera now, I can adjust the field of view. Remember, all of this has to be done in the motion editor uh, or in the graph editor. I, I use the motion editor for it. So I can change the field of view. We'll just go ahead and put it right there. And now I'm going to show you something else here. In order to see where your focal distance is actually at, I'm going to right click and select, select display and uh, display and show focal plane. And that'll put this sort of purple overlay on there. And then as I adjust the focal distance, you can see that the focal distance moves in and out. So let's say that I want to have the camera focused on the spy while the scout in the background is blurred out. That looks about right. So I press enter, but oddly enough, it doesn't actually seem to change much. And even if I turn off the focal plane, it still looks the same. But that's because before it will show up, you have to go back to the clip editor. And you can see there was a slight modification. The, spy, the, the scout is now slightly blurred, but there's not a whole lot there. I mean, it's really difficult to see. And that's because there's another little thing here that we need to adjust, which is the aperture. So you can adjust the focal distance, but there won't be much visible effect unless you turn up the aperture. Here's the rule of thumb for the aperture when you're using it for focal distance changes. Um, the higher the aperture, the more severe the effect will be. So um, if I turn the aperture up all the way, OK, nothing happened. Why not? Well, again, because none of this will actually show up until we go back over here to the timeline. Now we can see that the scout is really blurry and the spy is really crisp. Uh, if I go back here to the motion editor and I put the focal, di uh, fo actually, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the uh, focal plane again. Now I'm going to put the focal distance right on the scout. Press enter and go back here. Okay, see, now when we go when we used the same aperture, what we get is an incredibly blurry effect, which is probably not what we really want. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the aperture down a little bit. And then I'm going to go back here. Okay, still a little blurry. So now what I'm trying to show you is you're going to need to experiment with these settings a little bit to get the best effect for you. Um, and it will depend on the effect you're trying to achieve, but uh, you know, depending for for me, I just want the spy to be a little bit out of out of focus while the scout is is in focus, is crisply in focus. Um, now, one of the things you're going to find is, and and I can go in, and, I, and you can even animate this, by the way. If I go in here into the motion editor and I say select some time, let's say over the course of about two seconds, I want that to uh, to change so that the focal go the focal plane goes from the scout to the spy. So this, you know, you get that sort of focus change effect. Well, that's easy enough. I just need to go here uh, and I just create this, uh, this slide here by uh, shift, shift uh, mouse wheel will expand those things out if you didn't know that. Um, another free tip there. Uh, and then I'm going to close the, put the playhead right here and then I'm going to adjust the focal distance so it comes up here to the spy. And then when I watch it, you can see that the focal distance changes over the course of two seconds. But what's interesting is even when I've applied that and I go back here, let's say I turn off the focal plane so it's more obvious. This looks good, but then as soon as I start playing, all of those changes go away. And the reason is, and you'll see here in a moment, that the scout became a little a little blurrier. And if, if I scrub and then I push, put it there and then I wait for a moment, you can see as each frame progresses, the spy is a little bit more in focus and the scout is a little bit more out of focus. But because it takes several seconds, up to several seconds to render each frame, you just it, the engine doesn't bother trying to render focal distance right away when you're scrubbing around. So you're not going to see it much in your viewport, which is why I recommend leaving this kind of a thing towards the end of your rendering process and, and your development process of your movies, whatever you're making. And the other reason is because just rendering these two seconds uh, at least on my machine, I can't speak for yours. Rendering these two seconds in 720p will take over two. Will take over. Excuse me. Will take over five minutes. Rendering a full 60 seconds of this with the focal uh, depth of field quality set to 16 will take about an hour, hour and a half. Uh, so you know, pick your battles in terms of where you want to uh, uh, to use this depth of field quality because you can take the depth of field quality way up and you can get some incredible looks. Uh, but it does come with a trade-off in render time. So you're going to need to balance that uh, and maybe pick a week, you know, a, a day to do your final renders that you're, you know, would, excuse me, I put that wrong. Uh, 
set up your, 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 your pipeline so that when you're ready to do your final render, you know you've already got everything done and it is exactly what you want. So when you click that button and you go away, you're not going to get ticked off when you come back 36 hours later and the movie didn't come out the way you wanted it. So it just call, you know, it, it, it's a, it's a reinforcement that you should do most of your work ahead of time to make sure that the, the movie looks right, but there it is. So focal distance, the keys are, you're going to be your focal distance and your aperture. The higher the aperture, the more the focal distance will have an effect. Uh, and uh, of course, you, and the other trick is of course that you have to be in the motion editor or the graph editor to make these changes and uh, that the changes will not be visible until you go back to the timeline and then you can see that they do become more visible or they, they do become rendered if you wait for a moment. Um, so that's uh, your tip of the day, how to apply focal distance and aperture to achieve some interesting visual effects with your cameras at the cost of render time. Uh, I hope this has been useful for you, and I hope that you get uh, some cool effects out of it in your own videos. I am Jimmer Lenz. This has been your Source Filmmaker Tip of the Day. As always, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy using Source Filmmaker.